Angel in the Driver's Seat, a theatrical monologue by John Joseph. Angels come in many forms. Sometimes we are unaware of their presence, even though they may be right in front of us. I will never forget that first morning. I can still remember it like it was yesterday, especially her. I sluggishly climbed the steps and boarded the 738 uptown bus for the first time on a cool September morning. I didn't notice much of anything or anyone in my immediate surroundings that day. My thoughts were focused on the impending destination and what I was about to face. I deposited my fare, blankly smiled at the driver, and sat somewhere midway within its interior. As I slid over to the window seat, staring outwards, my thoughts began to become fearful. I was headed to 64th Street, the outpatient facility of Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. Yes, that's right, that cancer center. Still reeling and unable to grasp the reality of it all, I pondered and asked myself time and time again, how could this have happened? Did, did they get it right? It's impossible. I feel fine. I never smoked, always ate right, exercised, didn't really indulge in drinking or drugs. How the hell could this be happening? But here I am, after all the consultations, all the meetings, all the tests, headed uptown so they could put a shunt in my veins and start pumping me with all kinds of chemicals. Son of a bitch, I don't need this. I'm sitting here on this bus. Everyone here is healthy, or at least they look like it. Hell, I look it too. Maybe I should get off at the next stop, turn around, and just go home. Outside my window, it looks like a normal day in the city, but not for me. No, not for me. I feel like I'm heading to the firing squad. The hardest part of all this is being here alone, but I guess that's my fault. I didn't tell anyone. I didn't want anyone to know. I didn't want anyone to treat me any differently. I didn't want anyone to worry. Five blocks more. This is my stop. Here we go. I slowly make my way to the front of the bus, and just before I get off, I turn and look at the driver, look away, and then back again. She has a gentle and kind face. She is smiling at me. See you tomorrow. And don't worry, it's all going to be okay, she said with a wink. Why did she say that? That was odd. I didn't say a word the whole trip. Did, did she see me sitting there with a sense of despair? Did my expression give it away? Day one was hell. A long, narrow needle into the back of my spine for a bone marrow test. Then six hours of chemo and gee whiz, I get to do it all again tomorrow. I board my ride again and notice that welcoming look about her almost immediately. This time I sit only one seat behind her as I catch her forwarding a glimpse at me from her rearview mirror. I must look like shit. She must be noticing, and it was only the first day, another three weeks of this. I am not going to last. Thirty minutes later, I reach my stop, and as I exit, yet again, she smiles and tells me it's all going to be okay. What the hell? Why does she keep saying that? Day three, I'm greeted by her. I climb aboard knowing this trip will only produce three hours of chemo. Four, five, and six, it's all the same. Each day seems to just slip into the next, pump me up with meds, and send me home. But as every morning approached, the moment I look forward to, the moment which I cherished, became that uptown ride, that same driver, that same smile, that caring look. I must get to the bottom of it, even though she is very comforting in the small gestures she sends my way, hours 
have turned into days and days into weeks. Perhaps tomorrow I will get my nerve up to talk to her. I need to find out more. I seem to have lost track of time. My daily course became a grueling routine and fatigue had set in. But somehow I found what courage remained to press on. My bus rides continued and our conversations grew. Her name is Santana, a native of Venezuela, olive skin with straight black hair, slightly longer than shoulder length. A beautiful, encouraging smile, delicate features and brown eyes. She looks to be roughly five feet tall or so. She is noticeably petite in her physical proportions, but one that glows largely with inner strength. I admire her as she confidently manages to to handle this oversized two-ton metal and glass behemoth with ease as she maneuvers it through the daily congestion in the streets ahead. With each passing week, I began to handle my treatments with a greater understanding, and in, in the wake of it all, I, I looked forward to seeing her on my morning rides. I slowly opened up to her, first making small talk, then divulging more of my life in small bits, but in the most bizarre sense, she seemed to already know my story. She seemed to understand all about it, and for a few short minutes each day, she made me feel at ease, a complete stranger whose words were filled with caring when I needed it the most. I came to know her as the most compassionate and calming individual I ever had a chance encounter with. I began to want more. 28 days had passed as my scheduled treatments began to near a close, and in my weakened state, I strived to push forward. Good morning, I said with a bigger-than-normal smile. Good morning to you, she said with her usual polite nod. I wanted to ask you, uh, I may not be riding this bus for much longer, and um, I was wondering if you would let's see where this journey takes us. Let us wait and see, she responded warmly as she stopped me in the middle of my question. My story began and ended some years ago. I endured all that was thrown at me, and through the struggle, through the weariness, and the stress of the unknown, I survived. I went back to ride the 738 sometime after my treatments were over. There was no Santana. Behind the wheel was an unassuming-looking man, rather thin, with a receding hairline. He didn't know of anyone named Santana. He was new and said most drivers had been rerouted. Each time I board a bus now, my first hope is that she would be there to greet me, and I would be able to thank her for the kindness that she helped me get through it all. And I would be able to tell her, I am cancer free. My angel in the driver's seat.